Will you get addicted to opioids for the treatment of restless leg syndrome? This question can come in many different flavors that I get asked by my own patients and around the country when it comes to the treatment of restless leg syndrome. Once you start an opioid, will you get stuck on it? Will you ever be able to get off the opioid? Will you become a drug addict from taking opioids? These are all really common questions and very good questions and ones I hope to answer in today's video. I'm Dr. Andy Burkowski of Relax Health and the topic is opioid addiction. Well, it's not really opioid addiction because we don't in medicine use the term addiction because it's sort of a vague term. In the DSM-5, which is the manual for psychiatric condition diagnoses, we use the term opioid use disorder. I'm not really gonna talk about opioid use disorder as an entity, but I wanna talk about abuse versus dependence because it's important that there's an understanding of these terms, and I'll talk about that in a second. But when it comes to any of these terms that you use, it turns out that in restless leg syndrome, the risk of any of these things, abuse or dependence for restless leg syndrome is extremely low. And that is due to a variety of factors. The main one being that restless leg syndrome is a different condition than what you typically would think of with opioids. Restless leg syndrome is much different than different forms of chronic pain in which one would be prescribed an opioid for long-term use. It's much different than what we call acute pain, which is, for example, somebody having surgery and being given an opioid narcotic to help relieve the symptoms. And it's much different than people who might be using opioids uh, for euphoria or to get high, someone on the street or somebody at a party. The prescription for restless leg syndrome is very different. Opioids are the oldest known treatment for restless leg syndrome dating back to literature from the 17th century. We in modern practice have been using opioids for at least 30 to 40 years, particularly methadone in the treatment, and it's extremely effective at low doses. So this is a much different condition. People are taking very low doses. Uh, the drug is very stable over a long period of time. The condition typically does not get worse on these drugs. And that might be a different response than when opioids are used in these other circumstances. Restless leg syndrome is also what we call a different patient population. It's not typically severe in young adolescents or even young adults. Primarily, it's people who have developed dopamine agonist augmentation from long-term use of these medications. There are it's pretty rare to have very severe cases of restless leg syndrome in people who do not have extremely low iron levels outside of those who have been on dopamine agonists. So natural restless leg syndrome often would never be severe enough to require the treatment uh, of opioids. So people who are put on opioids are often older or who have been on dopamine agonists for many years. So these are all differences in what we typically would use opioids for. So let me first talk about abuse. Abuse can be defined as taking the drug for reasons other than what was intended. So a doctor prescribes an opioid at a specific dose, and the individual, instead of taking it to relieve restless legs, is taking more and more of it, or taking it to get some sort of effect, getting high off the opioid, or even getting the opioid to sell on the street to somebody else. This is what we would refer to as drug abuse. Again, the risk of this is lower in restless leg syndrome, and in part it's due to the two drugs that are commonly used, long-acting opioids, one of them being buprenorphine, another being methadone. Methadone and buprenorphine, not coincidentally, are long-acting opioids. They typically do not cause people to get high, and they're typically not as frequently as a frequently abused. In fact, these are the two main drugs, buprenorphine now being the main drug, to help people get off of street drugs like fentanyl or heroin or prescription drugs that are opioids. They're helping people get off the drugs, but these are the ones that are used in restless leg syndrome. So they're a lot safer to begin with and typically don't come with as many risks as the short-acting opioids and of course, the drugs on the street. So let's talk about dependence. So dependence uh, comes in different flavors. So 
we can talk about a treatment dependence. So what is the risk for treatment dependence? This is what you could consider the condition is moderate to severe and you're dependent on the treatment to relieve the condition. This is probably the, one of the more common forms of dependence for restless leg syndrome is that if you're getting to an opioid, you probably have tried multiple other treatments, your condition is fairly severe, now the opioid works, so how are you gonna get off the opioid if you need it to relieve the symptoms of restless leg syndrome? The point here is that that would be true regardless of whether you had the treatment to begin with or not. Nothing else worked. Now you're taking opioid, the opioid works. So in a sense, you are dependent on the treatment because it's the only thing that works. But that's not as big of a concern as hopefully over time, more and more better treatments start to come out that are on par with the strong effect of opioids. A second form of dependence is more psychological where you have this need for the medication. It, it really is something that you really need to take and you're concerned about not taking it or the restless legs will come back. This, this is certainly a, a concern when it comes to restless leg syndrome, but it's not a huge problem uh, typically at these low doses. And uh, sometimes people are unwilling to try other medications that have failed in the past that are when the condition gets better. Let's say somebody was iron deficient, they got an iron infusion, their condition got better, but they're still taking the opioid. They might be psychologically hesitant for fear that the condition is gonna get worse if they go off the opioid. So it's a real consideration, but it's not really a chemical dependence. So the third category is chemical dependence, and this is possible, but somewhat unlikely with restless leg syndrome. And the large reason for that is that most people who are taking opioids for restless leg syndrome are on very low doses. Not only that, people are less likely to develop a tolerance. That means to produce the same effect, they need to take more and more of the drug over time. Is this possible? Yes. Have I seen it? Yes, but it's actually pretty uncommon relative to other situations in which opioids are taken. So people actually might be able to get off the opioid if they have another treatment for the restless legs, but there may not be a chemical withdrawal by going off the medication, and that would be something that many individuals are concerned about. Usually, people can be tapered off over several days to a couple of weeks rather quickly. In fact, it's probably easier to taper off an opioid than a dopamine agonist, which may take weeks or months. The evidence for this is pretty apparent from some of the clinical studies over the past 30 years, but the biggest breakthrough has been the National RLS Opioid Registry run out of Massachusetts General Hospital. And this registry has tracked several hundred people for at least a couple of years now. And in their latest publication uh, this past year in 2023, they showed that the majority of people who were taking opioids for restless leg syndrome either were at the same or a lower dose after two years within the study. So if people were really abusing the drug, taking more and more of it, needing higher and higher doses, this registry would have picked up that these doses kept going up and up. And that was only seen in a small number of cases. And most of these individuals had fairly severe restless leg syndrome with augmentation. So they weren't really going up on the dose possibly due to developing tolerance to opioids. It was actually because the condition was, was getting worse due to augmentation. But even on top of all this evidence, there are mitigation tactics for reducing the risk of abuse or dependence. One of them is selection of who goes on opioids. So a lot of physicians do what's called the opioid risk tool, and that's a way to stratify what one's individual risk is of developing an opioid use disorder. And it's a lot of different psychological factors, family factors, uh, looking into whether people, the individual has abused other drugs or substances in the past. And so it's not as much the drug that provides the risk, it's sort of the circumstances around the person. And that's where the restless legs population, it's a different type of people than, than it would be 18 year old going to a party in college. That's a different population of people and a different risk 
So one of the things that doctors do after they prescribe it, they select the right people to get these medications, but then they also monitor them very closely. So one is that every time a doctor prescribes an opioid, they look at the pharmacy database in the state that the patient's in and many surrounding states and can see if that patient's getting drugs from other doctors or other people, or if they're taking more than they should be, requesting early refills. This stuff is tracked very closely now. Uh, a second way of tracking people is a urine drug screen. The urine drug screen can be done periodically or even randomly, and that shows other drugs of abuse or other drugs that people should or should not be taking. So if somebody's on an opioid, and they do a urine drug screen, they should have that drug in their urine and they shouldn't have other drugs in their urine that they're not supposed to be taking. So this can help catch uh, individuals who may not be using the drug appropriately. And it's another way of monitoring for these risks of abuse or dependence. And then the big key is doctors need to follow up with individuals regularly, either by regular contact or periodic office visits just to ensure that things are going well and that they're not having adverse effects uh, from the opioid use, whether it's restless leg syndrome or any other condition. So the risks overall are quite low and one must weigh the risks of opioids with the balance of effects, the benefits to opioids being the most powerful treatment uh, for restless leg syndrome, particularly when other treatments have failed. But again, the serious risk with opioids, of course, is a poisoning or an overdose where one takes too much opioid than they're used to and it causes them to stop breathing. That's the biggest fear when it comes to opioids. And that's what we want to avoid, whether uh, an individual is on a low dose or on a high dose or has opioids around at all. That's the biggest risk and that's a higher risk uh, than other drugs. But overall, when it comes to those with restless leg syndrome, that risk is much lower, and that's been showed, shown in extensive research now over the past 30 years. So if an individual is in a situation where they have severe restless leg syndrome, they got to weigh those risks and balance them with the potential benefits for opioids, which are substantial in this condition. And that's why opioids should be preserved as one of those protected treatments for restless leg syndrome, particularly when it comes to severe restless leg syndrome or those suffering from augmentation. As always, this video is for general information only, does not constitute the practice of medicine. All decisions about restless legs treatment, opioids should be under the care of a licensed medical professional. And as always, one of the keys to sleeping well is to relax.